I'm talking with Andy Van Dam. He is a professor of computer science at Brown University and author of one of the best known books on computer. Co author. Co author of one of the best known books on computer graphics. Um, a lot of people say that using computers makes people more intelligent. Building computers gives insight into the workings of the human mind. Do you share that point of view? Yes. I uh, notice I hesitated a bit in answering the question. I was pondering the, the second one in particular. Uh, so let me say I'm not a, uh, a person who's very familiar with theories of mind, how the brain works, analogies between how the human brain works and how computer brains work. So I'll, uh, I'll take the first part of your question, okay. since I do know something about that. I've uh, been working since the late 60s, as Doug Engelbart has, for these 40 years on tools that do help people become smarter in some sense of, of the word smart, more enabled, more capable of executing tasks because they have faster and more convenient ways of collecting and organizing and navigating through information. So for quite a few years I worked on hypertext and hypermedia systems, but more recently I've not worked in that area and have been working on pen computing, pen and touch computing as a way to have more natural user interfaces, more fluid user interfaces that take advantage of more of our innate capabilities than classical windows, icons, menus, and pointing graphical user interfaces do. So smarter in the sense of more capable. Uh, it's an intelligence amplifier in a, in a limited sense to have a really fluid user interface with a lot of powerful comp computation facilities behind that interface. Do you think there are any limits as to how well we can organize information? Do you see a time when everybody will instantly have virtually all of the world's knowledge at his fingertips and be able to add to that body of knowledge? One could say, arguably, that the web already affords you that, but I think the, the crucial distinction here is between information and knowledge. There certainly is a plethora of raw information out there, but most of it is of unknown origin and provenance. Uh, you don't know how reliable the information is, whether it's factually accurate, how much it omits from what is really salient, and it's the human's job to digest it and make sense of it. So we have data, we have information. What we don't really have is knowledge, which is a much deeper level of uh, understanding of the raw information and also much closer to some sense of ground truth. Uh, when I do a Google search, I get a whole lot of stuff that I don't know what to think about because I can't tell necessarily who wrote it and how authoritative it is. Same thing with Wikipedia. Um, it's very handy and that's a very good thing, but when you're finished reading something, you really do have to go back to the primary sources. Is that a technical problem that can be solved if enough people work on it? I don't think it's, uh, in the first instance, a technical problem. It's a problem of authorship and how you uh, identify the source of the information that you've put on the web and one could think that downstream AI will evolve to a point where there will be actual semantic understanding of the content and that intelligent agents can then help you filter and find trustable, trusted information. So would you say that computers are basically a tool that extend our capabilities but don't really add uh, new capabilities that are qualitatively different from what we had before? Well, this is one of those classic, if you make enough of a quantitative difference, you get a qualitative difference things. Uh, I would say the fact that you can get instant results to searches and that you can really navigate very, very quickly through mountains of information 
does give you a qualitative edge that you didn't have before when you had to go to the library. So in no sense am I going to say nothing has changed. I think a lot of things have changed. But I think what we're all waiting for is that step up from tons of raw, unqualified information to much more qualified and ultimately more semantically decoded information. Does this also imply that the user would have to ask more intelligent questions and refine Absolutely. the search to get the results he wants? Yeah, I think you can't ask a naive search and say, give me all the information you have about topic X and expect to get anything sensible back. You have to be able to have some understanding of the, of the classification process of how you refine what you're interested in. You have to be able to engage in a dialogue with the computer and based on what kinds of results you get back, refine your, your inquiry. Who's driving most computer development? Is it the universities, the government, uh, private enterprise? And who decides that a topic is worth pursuing and then allocates the resources to research it? So I think the standard answer would be all of the above because there's certainly work going on in all the sectors you mentioned. Some of the pioneering work is being done in universities, but also in cutting-edge companies like Google and Microsoft and IBM, where new results are also being created and discovered. And the government is still continuing to fund research at far too low a level, and of course with the current economic meltdown, uh, there's very serious concern about how much universities and government and industry are going to be able to do on probably reduced rather than expanded budgets. Is there a sense that there's a rush to develop this technology? For thousands of years we didn't have it and we got along well enough, at least we didn't know what we were missing, mm -hmm. but now we have to drive it as fast as we can. Maybe we're overly enthusiastic about this technology. Well, I think we're certainly unrealistic about how well the technology can support us, but the fact is that we're doing things in ways that we didn't do 10 years ago because of the web, because of powerful search engines. We are able to locate things, we are able to sift through things, however manually, or using a page ranking algorithm in the case of search. Um, we are led surprisingly often to things that are of interest to us, but I think our expectations are also being ratcheted up, and that's a good thing, that the bar is being raised on what people expect from computers, and uh, there are thousands of people trying to figure out how to provide uh, the new capabilities that people will come to expect. Now, what sort of computer tools would you most like to see developed that would be useful for yourself? What are you lacking that you'd like to see well, appear? The thing that uh, strikes me as missing most is what Doug Engelbart's NLS system showed us was possible in, in six, stands for uh, online system. It was the system he demoed mm -hmm. in 1968. Uh, that was an integrated system in which all the tools worked together mm -hmm. and you were completely immersed in a self-contained environment which dealt with all your needs. Granted. Our needs today have gone a bit beyond what we were able to satisfy in the late 60s, but nonetheless, we've sort of lost that integrated environment, and unfortunately what we have now is a set of siloed applications that don't know about each other, that were developed by independent groups, often independent companies. And so, as a user, you have to open this application, and you have to open that application, and you have to figure out jury-rigged ways of getting information from one into the other, if at all possible. And what I'm still looking for is an integrated environment with integrated tools where all I have to know is that set of a priori integrated tools.